July 1st, 2018, was make a stand for SJD, right? Yep, yep, yep. Hey, and maybe two days, but we got to stitch all these little pieces together, and it's not over. I got to finish the errand tomorrow. Well, part of the errand. Anyway, I'll let you guys in on it once it's... I think, hey, Justin, I, I think... I said, it's, guys, it's late, I got to go to bed, and I, I showed you my phone, it was 3.20. I, I think, uh... The Lord said, look it up right then, it meant, said the end. By a bizarre set of circumstances, had something, I ended up in this room right had something to do with something that took place. And then, when the girl gave me my birthday, and then, within, like, a couple days in between, yeah. Is it in your mind that Jesus just told you and what I love the fact that he, he was such a good friend that he went and found his friend and said, come see. And he was so filled with sold on. You didn't have to remind him. He told him, he said, I have found him. Let, let me encourage you with this, church. Friendships provide the most fertile soil for evangelism. So that's why living right is such a great thing. Because in order for me to be able to, good, to, be, able to be a good witness, I better have been the right kind of friend. So that's why living right is such a great thing. Because in order for me to be able to good to be able to be a good witness, I better have been the right kind of friend. If Philip had been living the wrong life, then he goes back to Nathaniel, hey, we found him. Found who? I didn't even know you were looking for him. Look at the way you're living. Good point. And you're gonna tell me to come see the No, I'll pass. Wouldn't it be good if we had a life? I, I, I had a life that backed up what we say we believe? And it makes it easier to look at that co-worker. And it makes it easier to look at that neighbor, look at that friend and say, Hey, I found the Messiah. You know I'm not perfect, but I'm doing my best to show you that there's somebody that's made a change in me. And he can make a change in you. He so notice here that the lost people have to be judged and give an account of what they did as well. Then we go to Philippians 2 again. If we look at Philippians 2 again, remember the wording here. Who's the one that gives a confession? The one who gives a confession is things above. So that's a given. We could uh, gives a confession. Oh, is it new? And even creation itself have to say Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And that's something else, right? That's quite a confession to make. That's quite an exaltation that Jesus Christ received. All right, let's go to Philippians 2. Because of wherefore, that's why, uh, verse 10, 11, and 9. See? You confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, then, remember, what does that mean when you confess Jesus as Lord? See this right here? Secrets. Show you that there's somebody that's made a change in me, and he can make a change in you. He had not only had a seeker's heart to go after God, he had a soul winner's heart and said, I'm going to go find my friend. And Nathaniel said in verse 46, Nathaniel said to him, Can there anything good thing come out of Nazareth? where he was from in, in Nazareth, they, they're probably rival cities. Okay? High schools y'all go to. North. But look, look at the fact. He said, come and see. Well, can anything good? And I, Philip didn't try to argue with him. You know what his statement was? Come and see. I'm telling you. I found it. The son of Joseph, the carpenter's son from Nazareth. You're telling me some good out of that town? Come and see understand a little bit about them and you'll find that there in John 6 but he embraced Jesus immediately I love that 
he heard, he, he, met, he met Christ, and Christ said, follow me. Right away, I, I'm with you. Let me get my friend. All right, Philippians so he goes and gets him. Two, so right please. All right, we're learning from our Lord and Savior concerning about humility. And another thing is obedience. That's what you're going to find out. It's, it's going to be humility and obedience. And that's the pattern that I follow. That's Jesus' Lord. See this right here? Secrets. You have to give an account to God. That's why you have to be serious. That's why you have to do it. You're okay. All right. This he said to prove him. Why? For he himself knew what he would do. You know, a lot of times, church, the Lord, for lack of better words, just setting you up. Because he already knows what he's going to do. Aren't you glad you have a God that has it all together? You and I, how many times? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Aren't you glad you don't have a God in heaven that says, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, we have a God in heaven that says, I already know. Calm down. Trust me. I love what John 2.25 says of what Christ says about us. And needed not that any should testify of man. Look at this. For he knew what was in man. Jesus looks down inside and says, I know what's in you. And I know what I can pull out of you. And I know what I can do. If you just let me do it. That's a great thing about our Savior. His concern, he had a pessimistic view, but he forgot letter B. He forgot the supernatural power. Oh, no. Jesus wanted Philip to have passed his fear and have faith in God. How many things, church, have you and I dealt with where we looked at it and we started getting fearful? I want to encourage you, look past your fear and have faith in God. It, Philip saw him turn water to wine in John 2. He saw him heal people. He saw him raise people. But I've seen that man take pots that were filled to the brim. I helped put the water in them. I know it was water. And within seconds, he turned it into wine. I know what was in that pot. He did If he can do that, I've seen him, a man that was 38 years, couldn't walk. I've seen him pick up his bed and walk. Oh, that which boy. Was the conclusion. His conclusion was this. I, at letter A, you see the final picture. the disciples, if you will, they're in this upper room with Jesus. No so Can you imagine? One day when we get to heaven, we're going to enjoy it. I don't know what it was like, though, to walk with him every day. And there's a couple times in Scripture where it says he expounded unto them all things. He taught them everything. I'm going to teach you how to be a dad. I'm going to teach you how to be a husband. I'm going to teach you how to preach. I'm going to teach you how to run a crowd. I'm going to teach you how to reach the individual. Let me teach. Oh, man, he taught them everything. The ones who believed it were also the ones who did In Matthew 10, 16, he reminded them, I'm getting you ready, guys. I'm sending you out. Okay, You're going to be by yourself out there among the wolves. But he said, I'm not going to leave you alone because the Holy Spirit